All right, hello everyone. This is Katie from Linguistico, and I want to welcome you to class. I'll be your teacher today, and we're going to talk about argument expressions. We'll learn 10 phrases to describe things that someone might do or say in an argument. The objective is to use these phrases to describe what you would do in an argument or a difficult situation. These phrases are used frequently in English conversation, so they'll be useful if you ever have an argument in English. We'll practice our argument expressions by playing What Would You Do? A game where you use this argument vocabulary to describe what you would do in certain situations. So let's get started. So first, we're going to learn some of the vocabulary that we can use for argument expressions. So I'm going to screen share with you and show you a PowerPoint slide. Okay, so we have 10 total phrases for argument expression. Okay. The first one is, it gets on my nerves. It gets on my nerves. When something annoys you or makes you irritated, it gets on your nerves. For example, you can say, Justin Bieber's music oh, really gets on my nerves. It makes me irritated. It annoys me. Or I could say, it gets on my nerves when my husband doesn't do the dishes. So if something gets on your nerves, it's something that annoys you or makes you irritated. What gets on your nerves? I could say, it gets on my nerves when, when my kids play with toys and they don't pick them up. Ah, oh, it makes me so irritated. The next phrase is, oh, sorry. So what gets on your nerves? You can use the phrase, it gets on my nerves when, and then describe an action that people do that gets on your nerves, something that makes you irritated or annoyed. So I could say, oh, it gets on my nerves when people chew, when they eat food, when they chew hum, hum, with their mouths open. It is so annoying. Or I could say, I could also say, it gets on my nerves. Oops, one second, some technical difficulties, excuse me. I could also say that something gets on my nerves when, let's say, it gets on my nerves when people lie. That is so frustrating. Or, it gets on my nerves when people talk about me behind their back or behind my back. If someone talks about you behind your back, it means that someone is gossiping or talking about you and you do not know. That's why we say that it's behind your back because you don't know, you can't see them talking about you. They're talking about you and you don't know. So it gets on my nerves when people talk about me behind their back or behind my back. It gets on my nerves when people talk about me behind my back because I think that's very rude. I can say it gets on my nerves when my kids don't pick up their toys. Or it gets on my nerves when my coworker doesn't help me with the problem. Okay, so if something gets on your nerves, what does it do? It annoys or irritates you. Oops. It annoys or irritates you. Okay, the next expression is to storm out. Storm out. If you storm out of a place, you leave a place suddenly, so very quickly, and angrily. Okay, so Many times in TV, in soap operas, and in movies, 
you can see that when two people are fighting, sometimes one person gets very mad and they storm out. They might slam the door behind them and they leave. So I could say, yesterday I was so mad at my dad that I stormed out of the house and I slammed the door. Or I could say, my date made me so mad when I was at the restaurant with him that I stormed out. My date was so mad, oops, made me so mad, that's a typo, that I stormed out of the restaurant. Okay, so to storm out is to leave a place angrily and suddenly. Okay, and have you ever stormed out of a place? Um, I don't know if I've ever stormed out of a place. I think that I think that once one time when I was I stormed out of my house because I was fighting with my brother and I was very very mad and so all of a sudden I left and I slammed the door behind me so I stormed out. Expression number three Expression number three is to lose it, to lose it. Okay, and if you lose it, it means that you become very emotional all of a sudden, so very quickly. If you lose it, you can cry, you can yell, and you can become hysterical. Hysterical is when you are crying and you can't stop. Okay, so um, I see that we have Eduardo in the class. Eduardo, can you hear me? Yes, of course, Katie. Okay. I was so hello, Eduardo. Listening. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Great. Um, today we are... Did you hear the intro to the class? No, I just come in, but uh, don't lose it. You have okay. a student now. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just um, explain really fast what this class is about. Okay. Um, this class is about argument expressions. So this class is teaching you some things that people do or say when they have an argument. Okay, so these phrases are useful in conversation because they come up a lot. Okay? Okay. All right. So the phrase that we're on right now is to lose it. And if you lose it, you become very emotional, and you cry, you yell, and you become hysterical. Hysterical means that you can't stop crying. So yeah. I could, right, have you ever lost it? No, I'm a peaceful guy, so I usually have things under control, yeah. That's good. You're usually peaceful, so you don't ever lose it. Um, I wish that I could say the same. <laughs> Because I, sometimes I lose it. Um, for example, I could say, when I saw that I got an F on a test, I just lost it. Okay, so notice that in the past tense, this goes to lost. Yeah. Um, and when you get a bad grade on a test, Eduardo, um, do you lose it or do you... No, that was a long time ago. Um, maybe, yeah, you still, you can be angry with yourself but not lose it. For me, lose it is like lost control, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, a uh, different reaction. No, I don't react that way. <laughs> That's good, right. <laughs> right. Usually, usually little children oftentimes uh, lose it, right? They, yeah. they lose control and they can't control their emotions. They become very emotional. But sometimes adults do this as well, um, depending on the situation. Um, because I can say, for example, um, whenever she sees her boyfriend with someone new, she loses it. She starts crying. She can't stop. Okay. And um, a, a couple of the phrases that we went over before you came into class, um, the first one is, it gets on my nerves. Have you heard of this phrase before, Eduardo? Yes, yes. With... Mm -hmm. it's, when you are living with your couple or 
your wife uh, or your your kids, whatever, it gets on my nerve. Well, it could be for everything, even at work, some mm -hmm. colleague or whatever situation or a thing that the other people is doing, like biting his fingernails. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. It gets on your nerves. Right, exactly. So like you said, um, that's very common if you are living with someone um, because when you are around someone all of the time, some of the little things that they do can get on your nerves. Like you said, someone biting their fingernails gets on your nerves. Um, so what else um, gets on your nerves, Eduardo? Well, like I said before, I'm a peaceful guy, but uh, I don't know. There is some people that you get along better than others, so mm -hmm. sometimes it's just even with friends, some comments or yeah, maybe it gets on my nerve, but I never do anything. I don't react or, you know, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it gets on your nerves. It annoys you, but you just, you don't do anything. You don't react. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. So, um, like you said, sometimes when friends make comments that are mean, um, that gets on your nerves. Um, for me, what gets on my nerves is when people chew. Do you know what that verb is, to chew? Yeah, like a cow. Yeah. Uh, like like a cow. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, when they chew with their mouth open, um, yeah. does that get on your nerves? Mm, yeah, yeah. Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. For example, when you are having a dinner, of course, uh, in a formal way, you don't. Uh, chew with your mouth open, of course, um, when you are, I don't know, it, it is a cam, the, the, uh, a cam, is a cam? <laughs> is, it, is it a, I didn't um, understand the last word, could you repeat it? Yeah, like gum is this kind oh, of... Oh, gum, yes, gum, oh, I thought that you wrote to me, gum, right, so when people, sometimes when people chew gum, yeah, with, um, can with you repeat their mouth that for me? open. Yeah. Right, right. Sometimes they chew gum with their mouth open, and that gets on my nerves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, right, so like you said, there are many things that can get on our nerves when people chew with their mouth open, when they bite their fingernails. Another one and is when a woman is driving in front of you. <laughs> really, really slowly. <laughs> <laughs> really slowly. Well, sometimes, right? But, but there are good women drivers. Um, of, but, course, right. of course. I was joking. It's not about women or men. Yeah. Right. When you have a, a, maybe an older person in, on the road and they go really, really slowly, yeah, that gets on my nerves sometimes. Yeah. Right. No, that gets on my nerves too. Um, when someone is driving very, very slowly in front of me and I have somewhere that I need to go. Um, yeah. And it takes forever. <laughs> so that gets on my nerves as well. Um, so right, there are a lot of things that get on our nerves. Um, slow drivers, people who bite their fingernails, people who um, hoot you with their mouth open. Okay. And our next expression is to storm out. Um, have you heard of this expression before? Yeah, get out of here. Storm out, you don't like something and you storm is like a thunderstorm right so you go away really fast <laughs> right exactly very good that's a good description right so if you storm out of somewhere you leave um, a place suddenly so very quickly and yeah. angrily and like you said if, if you think of a thunderstorm it's very fast and very sudden so right. um, you leave all of a sudden and sometimes you slam the door do you know what that is to slam a yes. door? Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, so I could say, like yesterday, I was so mad at my dad that I stormed out of the house. Um, and have you ever stormed out of a place? No. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, uh, I prefer to have a good co communication with my girlfriend in this case. So we never not as a storm out of a room or the house, yeah. That's good, right. This is very important to have um, good communication with your partner and to not storm out. 
But um, for example, Eduardo, when you were a teenager um, and you lived with your parents, did you ever storm out? No, I didn't have that uh, uh -huh. character. I don't know how to explain it yet, but I'm really quiet. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. Your parents probably appreciated that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, but this happens with a lot of teenagers who are in that rebellious stage that yeah. sometimes they argue with their mom or their dad and they get very angry and they storm out. Yeah, I can storm out, but not slam the door. Maybe just I just go and take a walk and um, cool things. <laughs> Right, right, right. Because we can say uh, one thing that we can say is cool off. Cool off. Um, okay. Cool off. Like if you're very mad about something, you can take a walk and cool off. Yeah. Or cool or cool down. Um, right. So sometimes, sometimes you do storm out. Then not not slamming the door, but just saying that you need some time to to leave and think. Exactly. Yeah. And right. And cool. Actually, we we say cool down more. I need to cool down, cool off. You, you can use both, but um, I would say, let's cool see, down. I need to go cool down. Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> okay. So okay. Um, the, the next phrase that we have, um, so some of these phrases are good for arguments or describing what people are doing in them. Um, and then we went over lose it. Yeah. And then you said that you don't lose it because you're a very um, relaxed person. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this one I think you can relate to, um, is to keep your cool. Yeah. And have you heard of this phrase before? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I can figure it out. So, keep keep my cool is don't lose don't lose my nerves, for example, and don't react in a in a difficult situation. I don't know how to say, but uh, it's like chill out also. So <laughs> right, exactly. That's another good word <laughs> to know. Um, so it's like to chill out, and like you said, it's it's kind of the opposite of losing it. So instead of becoming, um, you know, overwhelmed, you don't lose it. You just keep your cool, and so you just stay calm. Yeah. And um, would you say that you do this most of the time? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't get too I don't know how to say too mad for things you know so I already keep my cool <laughs> okay. I, don't, yeah, I don't get disturbed uh, it it has to be something really important that affects me a lot mm -hmm. so you don't you don't ever really get um, very angry that something has to be very very severe for you to um, yeah. lose it right right. Mm -hmm. Right, so you just keep your cool. And how do you keep your cool if, for example, if people are fighting or there's a difficult situation, um, how do you keep your cool and not lose it or um, have it get on your nerves? Um, I don't know. It, it depends on the situation. But if I'm with friend and there is a fight, I don't usually get directly and put uh, punch someone. You know, I try to... Uh, put myself in the middle um, and cool down the situation. <laughs> okay, very good, right? That's excellent. Very good use of the words cool down, right? So you try to cool down the situation and um, keep people from fighting. Yeah. So you're like the peacemaker of, um, of your friends. Usually, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's see, so we have keep your cool. Uh, the next word that we have is to blow up on someone. This is a phrase that we use a lot in English conversation. Um, and have you heard of this before, to blow up on someone? Maybe, but it's not It's not a pressure verb that I've, I used before. Yeah, blow up. Right. Right, because this is kind of a phrase that's um, that's very colloquial that we just use in conversation. So, for example, you probably wouldn't read about this phrase in a book. Um, but to blow up on someone means that you suddenly get very, very angry and yell at someone. So if yeah, everything I is calm. <laughs> I suppose because of the verb, because blew up is like an explosion. Explosion also, right? They right. blew up something, yeah. 
Right, and that's one way to remember it is if you think of an explosion, everything is calm and then boom, yeah. something happens. So that's kind of what it's like. So, um, so for get example, that, get ah, that go angry, ahead. Right. Right to get angry very fast, yeah. and when someone blows up on someone, they usually yell at someone, and they yell at them for a long time. So I could, if I was blowing up on a friend, I would say something like. Why didn't you come to my party? I thought you would come. And you know what? I've always been annoyed at you. And and just keep going on and on and on. <laughs> That's yeah. blowing up on someone. So usually bosses blow up, no? Usually <laughs> bosses? His, bosses with his employees, right? Sometimes that does happen. Um, I'm very fortunate to have never been in a situation where a boss has blown up on me. But sometimes bosses do that. They say... You know, like your productivity is down, and this is terrible, and you guys have so much more out of you guys. And right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had um, a boss blow up on you? No, my boss is really cool. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, I would be very afraid if I had a boss blow up on me. Yeah. Right. So this one, um, if we look at our example, this is also irregular in the past tense. So I could say, everything was so calm, and then Tim blew up on me. He just started yelling at me about how I, how I was a bad friend. So, so like you said, you can think of it as an explosion, like someone getting very yeah. angry very quick. Mm -hmm. okay, um, the next one that we have is to lose your temper. <clears throat> Oops, let me, and there's some technical difficulties. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. Sometimes the screen doesn't work with PowerPoint. Let me try this again. Let's see. Screen share. Let's see. Let's give me one second. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll, just, I'll type it in chat for right now because it's not coming okay. up. But <laughs> um, the next one, though, is about the same thing as to blow up on someone, and it is to lose oops, uh -oh, lose your temper. Lose your temper. Oops, it's not shit. There we go. To lose your temper. And it's pretty much the same thing as blowing up. Um, when you lose your temper you get uh, very angry, very fast, um, it, but it's just another way of saying it. Lose your temper is more formal than saying to blow up on someone. Um, to blow up on someone is a very conversational expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, has anyone that you know, uh, because you seem very relaxed, <laughs> I don't think that you lose your temper, do you? <laughs> Not often, no. Maybe uh -huh. a little bit in uh, a few situations, but no, I don't show too much temper. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, so sometimes you lose your temper, but not often. Um, but does anyone around you lose their temper a lot? Mm. I, don't, I don't know. I have a family, a really quiet family, and we get along really well. So... Maybe at work, I've I've seen some situations uh, with because uh, in in my company we were around 80 person working there, and right now we are half because of the crisis here in Spain. The situation is really bad, and uh, we we've seen uh, people losing uh, their temper. Yes, of course, because oh, right. they. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you work in Spain then? Yes. Um, and what part of Spain are you in? I live in the uh, in the southeast of Spain, Alicante. Why? Oh, are you okay. here? <laughs> oh no, no, I'm I'm in the United States. I'm in Ohio. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I was just curious. But um, like you said, yeah, sometimes people um, they when they lose money, um, and they get very upset. Sometimes they can lose their temper. Um, yes, of course. Right. Or um, sometimes uh, with customer service, um, if someone has a problem. Wow, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Has that ever happened to you where... Um, yes, of course. Yeah. I prefer to talk with a person and not with a machine. So I don't like when 
uh, press 1 to speak with, if you have this problem, please, please press 2 or 3 or put now your number. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. I get a little bit... <laughs> Right, does it get on your nerves? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then you lose your temper and say, ah, oh, why is this not working? <laughs> <laughs> now, that happens with me sometimes, too. Um, oh, the next one, I finally got this to work. Um, the next one is to keep the peace. And this is to keep people from fighting. So right. like you said before, um, you usually are the person to stop your friends from fighting. So you keep the peace. And um, do you think that it's important to keep the peace or to have someone in your group of friends that always keeps the peace? Yes, I think so. Well, mm -hmm. I don't, we don't usually uh, get in fights uh, at all. So I think the last five I've been or some of my friends have been were, um, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not common here in my area <laughs> in Spain okay. with my friends so yeah we don't usually get in fights that's good great right. usually you think that um, adults don't get in fights and they usually don't but sometimes they do you just never know yeah of course of course it could be I uh, the other day um, in my city two people uh, start fighting because of, of an accident with the two cars, you know, mm -hmm. they start arguing in front of me and they start uh, fighting. Yeah, it was crazy, but oh, it could wow. happen to everyone. Yeah, of course. Wait, so there was a car crash, or we could say a car wreck, and um, people were fighting. That's really scary, right? Because um, sometimes it seems like a lot of time um, men will fight physically, like punching people. Yeah. Um, but uh, women seem to fight more with words. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, but if you keep the peace, for example... Um, always. <laughs> always. Did you keep the peace when uh, you saw the two people fighting over no, the car? No, no, no. no. I, I, stay, I stay in my car. Yeah. I didn't want to... If I know the people, because the situation was scary even, there were uh, cars passing by, you know, so it was a, a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Right, so that, that's important. It's, it's good to keep the peace, but not if you are in danger, right? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's probably not the safest thing to do to go up to two strangers on the street and say, hey, don't fight. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that probably isn't a good idea. Um, the next expression we have is, you're right. Um, I just put this in here because sometimes... Um, Spanish speakers, when they try to say you're right, they say something like you have reason or you have the reason. Yeah. Um, because they're thinking in Spanish. Yes, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Right, so just to kind of clarify that um, you're right is how you would say that. Yeah, um, it's, a really, it, it, it's really a common expression. I like to watch TV series, um, movies, and um, this expression is... Uh, a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're right. Very it is common. very common <laughs> in um in TV shows. Um, it's something that yeah. comes up a lot in in conversation. Um, and are there people that you say uh, you're right to a lot? For example, some people say that you should always say you're right to um your girlfriend or your wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you can say the other day I heard in a TV show uh, I buy it. Like it's like saying, "Yes, I I agree with you. You're right, right? I buy it." I buy it. Um, and this one is common of an expression, but um, I'll buy it. I, I'm trying to think how you would use that um, because it sounds familiar. I'll buy it. It's kind of like I'll I'll believe that. You know, I'll go with that. Right. I'll buy it. Yeah, that that's kind of like um. Yeah, I'll buy it. Um, because you're right is like I agree with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll buy it. Yeah, I heard that the other day in this way. Yeah. Do you remember what show it was from? Wow, I don't remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's no. okay. 
Um, yeah, because for example, if someone says, um, like, oh, I, I met this really nice girl uh, at the restaurant the other day, and someone can say, well, that sounds kind of like a lie, but I'll buy it. I'll believe it. Yeah, yeah, I understand you the other way too uh, for this expression. Yeah, I buy it mm -hmm. like when you are really uh, innocent. I don't remember, sorry. Uh, when you are really naive or gullible and someone make a joke of you mm -hmm. and, and you can say it's I, 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 I buy, I bought, you know, so I. Uh, Mm -hmm. say. Right, because you can say that too. Like, um, like I could say I bought it in the past tense, and I could say, um, like, let's say for example, I have, a, I don't know, like a, um, a boyfriend who always lies to me or something. I don't, but just in hypotheticals, um, and I could say, oh, he told me that, you know, he was just at a friend's house and that he had to spend the night for work, and I bought it. I believed exactly. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good um, colloquial expression to know. Right, I'll bu I bought it. I'm um, kind of like I I believed it. Okay, so very good. Um, oops, I believed it. And the next expression we have is to see someone's point of view. And if you see someone's point of view, you understand their perspective, or their thoughts, or their ideas. Um, so you understand what they think, but you might not agree. Um, so do you usually try to see other people's point of view? Yes, of course. I, I like to put myself in their shoes so I can understand what and why are they saying that or doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. very, very good. And that's also a very good expression, to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Right, <laughs> to see um, how they think. Um, have you heard of the phrase, um, don't judge me until you've walked a mile in my shoes? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's important to see um, someone's point of view. Um, so, for example, I could say, Friends is the best TV show in the entire world. And my friend can say, well, I see your point of view, but I like a different show better. Yeah. See someone's point of view, like you say, you don't have to agree. It's not like see eye to eye, right? Or right by eye. Eye by oh, eye. Oh, that's a good expression. Um, oh, that's a really good expression. Um, they're different, actually. If you see eye to eye, it means that you do agree. Um, yeah. Like you're on the same page. So, for example, I could say, um, my husband and I really see eye to eye about parenting. We have the same ideas about parenting. Um, we want to raise our child the same way. We really yeah. see eye to eye. Um, see someone's point of view is different because you might not necessarily um, agree, agree or see yeah. eye to eye, <laughs> but you can understand it. Right. Yes. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like, like like you said, you are trying to uh, think what he is thinking no? at that moment when they when he is saying. Uh, that, or because you want to understand, so you put yourself in their shoes, <laughs> so exactly. you can no? their point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And do you ever think that it's hard to see someone's point of view? Mm, maybe if we don't understand the situation or we don't have all the information we need. Right, so mm -hmm. yeah, people do crazy things, but with my friends, family, I try to put what and understand why are they doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Right, because sometimes it can be difficult, like you said, if we don't know all of the details of a situation, or if someone does something that's very against what we believe or against our values, um, then sometimes it's hard to see their point of view. But like you said, it's important to try. Uh, I think we have a couple more phrases left, or no, just one. Uh, the last one, <laughs> this one uh, isn't used as much, but it's um, to wind someone up. Have you heard of this before? No. Nope. No. This one isn't used as much as the other ones, but if you're winding someone up, you're trying to tease someone, and you try to make them angry, 
but you just want a reaction. So for example, if I'm trying to wind my friend up by saying, by picking on her, by teasing her, um, I just want to see her get angry. That's what happens when you wind someone up. So I can say, Ray, don't listen to that bully. He is just winding you up, and he just wants to see you get mad. <laughs> and um, ha have you ever, uh, this is kind of a strange verb in the past tense, have you ever wound, I think that's how you spell it, have you ever wound someone up? Or have has no. anyone ever wound up you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. I don't <laughs> like to do that yeah, at all. But maybe you can use uh, in this verb when wind. Sorry, wind up uh, in with a girl and a guy when they are trying to provoke each other for whatever to uh, with a couple. I mean, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, let's see, really uh, you could you could say it. I think it's not very common to hear that, but I think that someone would understand if you used it that way. Um, but actually, I thought of a better expression that we use more um, instead of to wind someone up. Have you heard of to push someone's buttons? Oh, sorry, buttons. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Right, that's the same thing as to wind someone up. That I would say that phrase is actually more common to push someone's buttons. Yeah. Stop stop pushing my buttons, right? Or don't push right. my buttons. Yeah, I heard that expression. Mm -hmm. right. So if someone is teasing me and I'll say, stop pushing my buttons. Like yeah. If I have a friend who just tries to say things to make me mad, he's pushing my buttons. Yeah. Um, and has anyone ever pushed your buttons? Yes, my girlfriend so many your times. Girlfriend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, though, with couples that uh, they push your buttons sometimes. Yeah, we know each other, so. <laughs> right, sometimes that happens with people. Um, I think it actually happens more with people that you know well, because if someone knows you well, they know what annoys you or awesome. what irritates you, so they know how to push your buttons. Yeah, they know which <laughs> button to push. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now that we um, did our vocabulary, let's see, I want to see how much you can remember. Okay, so I'm going to say the definition of a word, and I want you to choose the expression that um, means the, that that goes along with the definition. So, for example, uh, what word is to um, keep calm in a difficult situation? Uh, keep your cool or keep the peace, but keep your cool better. Uh -huh, right, exactly, keep your cool. And uh, what what one is when you cry all of a sudden, you shout, you become hysterical? Yeah, lose it. To lose it, right. Yeah. Um, what one is, this could be a couple of different ones. Um, which one is it when you get mad all of a sudden? When you get, when you get mad all of a sudden, lose my temper. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Right, exactly, lose my temper. So you notice that um, lose it and lose my, my temper are two different things. Sometimes people get those um, confused because they both have the word lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, which one is, uh, what one is another word to get angry really fast and explode on someone? Blow up. <laughs> right, to blow up. <laughs> um, what about if something irritates you? It gets on my nerves. Yeah. Uh -huh, exactly. Um, what about if you leave a place angrily and um, all of a sudden? Storm out. Mm -hmm, storm out. Um, which one is to tease someone just to see if you can get a reaction? When up. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, to wind someone up or to... Or to push someone's but buttons. Right, to push someone's buttons. Okay, so I can say, I always push my brother's buttons because it's fun to see him get angry. <laughs> yeah, teasing, right? <laughs> right, it's like to tease someone. Yeah. Um, let's see, which one is um, when you keep two people from fighting? Keep the peace. Uh -huh, to keep the peace. And then, um, which one is the opposite of you're wrong? 
the right. Right, exactly. That one was easy. Okay, so now that we know our vocabulary words, we're going to look at some hypothetical situations and see what you would do in those situations. Okay, so are you ready? Ready. Okay. All right, so um, what would you do if you find out that your friend told your secret? <laughs> well, it depends on the secret. The uh -huh. <laughs> My <laughs> answer could be di different, but yes, uh, keep my cool, of course, like always. Uh -huh. um, explain it that I don't want him to do it again. <laughs> okay, very good. So you would keep your cool and just explain to him that you don't want him to tell your secrets again. Of course, yeah. And um, would you tell your friend more secrets or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even even if they um even if they told your secrets to someone, you would still tell them secrets. Yeah, maybe a second or third time. Everyone deserves second, even a third chance. Why not? Oh, very good. <laughs> right. So you think that everyone deserves a second chance? Of very good. course. Uh -huh. Just with one, we we I suppose we lose all your friends if we are that strict, right? That's true, right? Um, I think you're right because sometimes, right? If um, if because everyone makes mistakes, and if um, if someone made a mistake and then we said all of a sudden, no, you're not my friend, then we probably wouldn't have very many friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So you would just uh, keep your cool. What about for? Whoops. For this one. Um, your boss fires you without any warning. Well, uh, <laughs> it could be several of these ones, but uh -huh. <laughs> I, I suppose uh, blew up on my boss because uh, if your boss is uh, wasn't treat you really well, and uh, you are uh, like getting getting more and more angry every month, every year. They don't rise up your salary. <laughs> uh -huh. They ask you for more hours, so at the end, if they are going to fire you without a warning, of course, you are going to blow blow up on that situation and tell a, a few things, tell him a few things, yeah. <laughs> right, very good. So you would say that, um, so you could say, I would blow up on my boss. Um, because, like you said, sometimes if you work very, very hard um, and your boss does not increase your salary or does not give you a raise and then he fires you all of a sudden, then that would make you very angry. So, you, you can use, uh, I was already, uh, I would like to use like accumulate, accumulate. Uh, I can use it with feelings or is, you know, like, build up or accumulate? Um, could you give me an example? Usually we don't use accumulate yes. with feelings, but I'm trying okay, to okay. think of an, an example. No, when your boss is uh, telling so many things, uh, like uh, work more, more hours, whether you are every month you are accumulating uh, or building up, all your feelings until the end that you blow up, right? And mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, you could say that. I was trying that. To, to, to look for a word to, like, accumulate is the first one I think of. But build right, up maybe think... is, is better. Yeah. Right, I'm trying to think of, of a word to say that I could say um, all these feelings, all of these feelings just kept um, building on, t I, maybe like building on top of each other. Yeah. All of these feelings just kept building on top of each other. Um, and uh, a lot of times, too, if we're trying not to express feelings, we can say, like, I'm holding them in. So you can say, all of these feelings oh. were just building up. Or uh, building up, sorry, that would be better. All of these feelings were building up. They were accumulating. So all of these feelings of anger and stress were building up. And I was just holding them in. Yes. And I couldn't express them. So, um, so if you're, so all of these feelings were building up, 
And then so if your boss fired you, you would just let all of those feelings go, right? Right. <laughs> and blow up on him. <laughs> He's very good. Hopefully your boss uh, doesn't listen to this in this no. class. <laughs> Um, let's see, what about the next one? What would you do if, let me find where I'm at on my slides. Um, what would you do, while well, you answer this one, if your best friends are fighting, you would keep the peace. Um, what yeah. would you do if someone cuts you off on the highway? Um, do you know what it is when someone cuts yeah. you off, what that means? Yeah, they get in your way, no? in front of you, um, mm -hmm. really close. So. Yeah. Right, so it's like when um, when you are driving and someone pulls out in front of you. What what did you say? Pulls out? Uh -huh. um, pulls out is like um, when you enter onto the road. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, right, so when someone pulls out or enters onto the road right in front of you when you are driving. Yeah, so you, 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 you have to... Uh, push the brake, right? Um, uh -huh. Reduce your speed because you have someone in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. And that's why people get very stressed out uh, when someone cuts them off on the driveway because you have to slam on your brakes. Slam, um, okay. Slam, right. It's like to do it very quickly yeah. um, and uh, it, to, to not crash into them. Yeah, yes, of course. Maybe that's what happened with the two, the two men who were fighting in the streets. <laughs> maybe one, <laughs> maybe one cut the other one off. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you do if someone cut you off on the highway? Well, uh, first of all, press press the horn. <laughs> okay, uh, you could say I would honk the horn. Okay, honk the horn. Okay. Um, uh -huh. The second one, I suppose, I go. I, I don't lose it at all. So, I don't lose my temper even in that situation. So, it doesn't get on my nerves. Um, like I say, I don't lose it. So, <laughs> keep the peace, uh, chill out, keep calm. Uh, okay. Just pass it over. Yeah. Right, so you would just keep calm, keep chill, and just keep going. That's, yeah. that's very good um, because many people get into wrecks because they are not calm. They they lose their temper or they blow up on someone when they cut them off. Yes, of course. Right. Have you heard of road rage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen some videos in YouTube about Russian people with this road rage. Yeah. They oh, are. right. <laughs> No, I've seen that as well. Um, the the videos of how people drive in Russia scare me. <laughs> yeah. But, right. So, um, and I, I wonder what they do uh, when they're driving. Um, if they keep, they seem like they keep their cool when they're driving. That they yeah. they're very chill. Um, that they just chill out. But I think it would be very hard to keep your cool in that situation. What do you think? Yes, yes. I'm I'm sure it's very difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because I've seen how they drive, and it, I would be too scared to keep my cool. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Um, let's see another one. What would you do if? Ah, uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Let's do this one. Um, what would you do if your friend says that the outfit you are wearing is absolutely hideous? Hideous. Hideous so. is. Um, do you, do you know what hideous means? I can I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose it's when, like it's ugly or right. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, like hideous is um, like more ugly than ugly. So something can be <laughs> ugly, <laughs> or it can be hideous. So they are even mocking you, right? <laughs> right. So we would say, well, what would you do, like, if your friend is mocking you? about your outfit and saying it's absolutely hideous. <laughs> well, first of all, like I always do, keep it cool. <laughs> uh-huh. So uh, you keep your cool. Yeah, keep my cool. Um yeah. I don't mind. I have if someone thinks it's not the case of course because I have very good taste with clothes. 
<laughs> but uh, if this happened, I very um, what to say. Uh, I believe I believe in myself, so I don't I don't mind if someone doesn't like what I'm wearing, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. So you you're very confident in what you wear, exactly, and you think that yeah. that looks good, right? So it doesn't matter to you that uh, someone else thinks it's hideous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Right. Sometimes, um, right. Sometimes it depends too. I think sometimes um, women get more uh, offended if someone criticizes their outfit, but it depends. It depends on the person. Yes. No. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, like I am. I'm gonna look for what he or she is wearing. I'm gonna wind him up. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> a little bit with another comment, yes, of course. Uh -huh. So, for example, if someone tells you that your outfit is hideous, you would try to wind them up. Yes, of course. I, I would say, them. what what kind of shoes are you wearing with these uh, trousers or pants? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> say, oh, those shoes are do not match with that shirt, and ugh. <laughs> It's okay, so very good. So you would um try to give them your own medicine, or try to yeah. sorry, try to um, give them their own medicine, of and course. wind them up. Ah, very good. That's a that's a good tactic. <laughs> um, what about if someone? Let's see. Um, what about if Justin Bieber uh met you in person, and he tells you that he is the best musician on earth, better than. The Beatles better than Madonna. Well, yeah, of course. My my comment will be whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you to keep your cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't bother me at all. So whatever you say, it's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> and you would also try to um. What else would you try to do since you're trying to, just like oh well whatever. Yeah, whatever. You're right. Uh -huh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. So you wouldn't try to push his buttons? No, not at all. No. No, it's not worth it. Maybe, maybe, maybe it depends on the situation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it depends. Um, let's see. What would you do? Let's see. I don't know. If Justin Bieber told me that he was the best musician on earth, I, I would probably do the same thing. I would just say whatever, because I don't think it would be good to talk to Justin Bieber. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, what about um, what about if someone steals your pet? Like let's say someone in the neighborhood steals your pet. Do you have a pet? Mm, I have it. Uh, a Spanish, a Spaniel cocker, right? Is the is the name in English? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's oh, a dog. Yeah, it right. was a dog uh, with oh, black uh, ears. A cocker spaniel. Cocker spaniel, right, yeah. I think yeah, that it might be like yeah, that. It was too old um, and he passed away so a few years ago. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, right. if, if someone is still my dog, I'm going to get mad, really, really mad, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I try to uh, get him back, of course, or calling the police or whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. So you would maybe like blow up on him and then call the police or lose your temper? Yes, maybe, probably. Mm -hmm. Right, I would probably do the same thing too. I don't have a pet, but I know that if I had one and someone stole it, I would be very upset. Yeah, right, but the first situation that you think of is like he just ran away. You know, so you don't think that someone stole your dog. <laughs> right, no. So it's a continuous situation. Uh, yeah. No, that's right, because that, that would be kind of a strange thing to happen, right? Like, right, to have someone think the first thing is that someone stole him, right? Usually usually pets run away if they're missing. Okay, we'll just do um, a couple more before we wrap this up. Um, okay. Let's try, oh, this one's a good one. Um, what would you do if your roommate... Uh, eats all the pizza in the fridge that you bought. Sometimes this is an issue when you live with someone yes, uh, in college. I was studying my my 
degree in another city, so I was living with uh, two roommates. <laughs> and uh -huh. the food situation it was complicated, yeah, because at the end we get really mad with one each other. At first we share everything and we buy uh, everything for the three of us. At the end it was a little bit crazy because really? yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> it, was it, it hard happens. to when you are right. living with someone, it happens. So yeah, you you get angry, of course. But I, it gets on my nerves, of course. That's mm -hmm. like like we were saying about uh, living with someone, right? Mm -hmm. um, what they do, and yeah, and the food is an important thing in that. When and when you are a student, of course, is it's not uh, that happens when you are. An adult, right? So when you have 20, 22, 24, yeah, maybe. Right. So, like when you're 22, 23, 24, um, and you're living with someone, it does get on your nerves when they eat the food that you buy. And I know that's a very common problem among roommates that um, they eat each other's food sometimes or um, and they don't pay the person back. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so it, it seems very complicated. No, well, but it's, we were friends and we still are, of course, so it's not that important. But in, at the moment, of course, come on, I'm buying all every day. I'm going to the supermarket buying this thing and you go once a week and you are eating everything. No, that's, <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I, I understand that. Um, and in Spain, um, people usually go to the grocery store several times a week, don't they? Or do they usually go once a week? No, I go practically every day or every other day, yeah, because I like fresh vegetables and we are only two living, yeah, my girlfriend and I, so I prefer to buy the things uh, every other day or every day, even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's it's really common here in Spain to buy uh, uh, I don't know how to say bread. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, is is I don't know the name in Spanish. Where are you living? Are you living in in Argentina? No, right? Uh, no, I, I, I just, okay. No, not not yet. I I uh, lived in Argentina <laughs> two years ago, but I'm in the United States right now. Okay, we we call it in Spain a uh, bread barra, so bar of bread, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the shape of the bread. So we usually here in Spain, in every home, people buy bread every day. Yeah. Right. Um, I actually lived in Chile and that was very common to buy bread every day. Yeah. Um, but in the United States it's not. And, that, and that's kind of one of the reasons why some people, it gets on their nerves when they eat food. Because we don't go to the grocery store every day. We go maybe once a week or once every two weeks. So, wow! Right. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's that's impossible here. We like right. to go, yeah, often. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we don't eat a lot of fresh food, uh, fresh fruit and vegetables because of that. Um. Oh, uh, and one thing that I wanted to to point out too, just really quick, um, about just a little thing about grammar. Um, in Spanish, like you can say like um. Nosotros éramos tres, or something like that. But in English, you have to say like there were instead of saying we were. So, for example, you could say there were three people in my apartment, or there's two people living at my house. Okay. But you can't say um, we were three people living there. It just sounds kind of strange in English. Okay, but if I'm include, I also I have to say there were three people in. My house, <laughs> right? Okay. Right. It's not. I know it sounds kind of strange, but yeah, you have to say it like that. Like there were three people in my house: um, me, my friend, and my girlfriend, or something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because you kind of have to explain it. You're welcome to uh, to include yourself in it. Okay. Uh, so we're almost out of time, but um, what were some of the phrases that we learned today? We learned it gets on my nerves. Yeah. Keep my cool. Uh. You're right. Uh -huh. <laughs> keep, keep the peace. Blow up someone. Why someone up? Uh, or to push their buttons, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> um, 
Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think to um, lose it. Lose uh -huh, it. To lose it. Lose my temper. Yeah. Uh huh. Very good. Excellent. It seems like you yeah, remember so most of them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh huh. Excellent. All right, Eduardo. We're we're we'll, we're um out of time, but thank you so much for coming to this class for arguments. Uh, expressions for arguments, and um. If you could leave feedback on my page, that would be great. That way um, I get some feedback on the class. And okay. um, make sure to check out our schedules, too, to see when our classes are coming up for next week. All right, so thank you very much for attending class. Thank you, Kate. It was nice meeting you. Thank you very nice much. Meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. See you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>